Hello everyone, welcome to Donna's World and Wellness Wednesday, which is about self-improvement in general, the connection between the body, the mind, the spirit, the soul, the emotions, but it's also specifically and especially about my battle with my weight. Now, last week, I shared my measurements and uh, weight figures with you. Um, and anybody who didn't tune in last week can go back to YouTube and the video is sitting there so you'll know how much I weigh and what my body measurements are. And you, I'm sure most of you will agree with me that they are pretty scary numbers that I need to do something about them ASAP because it's not just about how you look and how you feel, it's also about health. It is dangerous to be as fat as I am. Any doctor will tell you that. We'll talk about that later. So I'm sure you'll be wanting to know what kind of progress I've made since last Wednesday. And truth is that I haven't made much progress for, because I've kind of like allowed myself to be derailed by various psychological problems that are, you know, I and many other people have. The first one is I'm a chronic procrastinator. Never do now what you can do later on today or tomorrow or next week or even next month or next year. So I have this problem with procrastination. Now I actually um, have researched procrastination and I've discovered that one of the reasons that people like me have this tendency to delay things that need to be done is another psychological problem, which is perfectionism. Now, perfectionism is good in the sense that if you are the sort of person who wants everything to be perfect and done very well, it means that you tend to be sometimes a very, very high grade performer because you know you don't like sloppiness, you don't like mistakes, you don't like failure. So perfectionism is good within some context, but you know, it's also very bad in the sense that if you're always striving for 100%, since you're only human, you're very rarely going to make that 100%. And if you regard everything that is short of 100% as a failure, then you get yourself into this whole sort of like mental problem um, that actually paralyzes you. So anything you think you're not going to do beautifully and fantastically, you don't do at all. So there's a very important saying called don't, it goes, it was basically, it is that we should not make perfect the enemy of good. And what that means is, Strive to be good enough sometimes because you're not always going to be able to hit those heady heights. So don't think just because something is just good enough that you're not going to bother with it at all. And then you get into this sort of spiral of procrastination and delaying and not doing it at all because you can't do it perfectly. So I'm like that. I'll explain this a little bit more later. Then another psychological problem that held me back from getting the kind of results I could have gotten in the past one week is I have a tendency to panic when faced with huge challenges, which again, you know, is a byproduct of perfectionism because if for you every task is a mountain, a Mount Everest that needs to be climbed and you're not gonna be happy until you get to the top of that mountain, then you're going to be sort of like daunted and, you know, anxious. Whereas if you just say, you know what, I'll just walk for 10 minutes a day, or I'll just eat less sugar, you're going to make steady progress. So, you know, the less sugar is the good, the no sugar at all ever again is the perfect. So when they say don't make perfection or perfect the enemy of good. What they mean is don't let your perfectionism get in the way to prevent, of, you know, in the sense of preventing you from doing something worthwhile just because it's not that great. 
because you know I think I said last week the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step and people who have this tendency to be obsessed with perfection need to learn how to accept that some steps are small but still worthwhile and that as long as you're putting one foot in front of the other you are gradually getting towards your goal you know so uh, so I spent the past week panicking and another thing that um, held me back was my fear of change uh, you know no matter how uncomfortable you are with bad habits or with issues like excess weight, obesity, or whatever challenges you're facing, once you get into a rut, you're used to those things, you're used to that habit. I'm used to sort of like having a certain number of meals a day, eating pretty well whatever I want. I'm used to lounging around on my bed, watching movies or reading books and not moving much, especially in Nigeria where we are fortunate enough to have domestic help. So actually you don't even have to get up and make your own cup of coffee. There's always some young person you can call to bring the coffee to you. And so, you know, part of taking care of your health is to move more. So, but this past week I haven't I haven't faced up to that challenge. I've stayed in my little comfort zone of asking other people to bring me coffee or water or whatever it is that I need. I've stayed in my little comfort zone of lounging around on my bed instead of, you know, moving around more. And um, so, you know, all oh, these are all, of course, excuses, but you know, I'm human. And I know that many of you out there have the same problems. So it's quite good for us to verbalize the, the things that hold us back from being the people that we could be. Because life should really be about moving towards fulfilling your potential on, on lots of different levels. And many of us fail to do that simply because of all these problems I've already mentioned. So uh, <clears throat> I just thought I would tell you so. Long story short, I mean, I did do a few things right. Um, I drank lots and lots of water. And that is actually a lifelong habit of mine. So it's not like I made a special effort to drink lots of water, which is healthy. It's like I just carried on drinking lots of water. It's always been a good thing that I do. So, but at least it's a good, th it's something I did right. I also, for the first time in, you know, quite a while, had two proper structured exercise sessions with a personal trainer and um, felt a lot better at the end of it despite you know the a few aches and pains because exercise generates something called endorphins which lifts your mood and you respect yourself more because you've done something good for your body i mean this kind of like exercise is the mantra of the health world there is no doctor alive who's not going to tell you to exercise even if you've had a heart attack you're supposed to exercise. Even if you have physical disabilities and pains in your knees, you're supposed to exercise. So I managed to put in two um, quite long sessions in the gym and around things like strength training, dumbbells and all that. So I'm very happy with myself about that. But you know, again, the perfectionist side of me is a bit disappointed because I had plans to do exercise almost every day. My plan was to exercise five days a week, take two days off because the, you know, the muscles do need to rest. I didn't do that, but at least I managed to do two sessions. Um, and what else did I do right since last Wednesday? Okay, I had less cheesecake. I still had cheesecake to be honest with you, but not as much as I normally do. So I think we can give me a little clap for that. Uh, it's better than nothing. You know, I'm trying to learn to take the view that any progress is better than nothing. Because before, if I wasn't doing it perfectly, I wasn't interested. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't feel that I'd achieved anything. So, 
it's quite unusual for me to say, well, at least I managed to do two exercise sessions. At least I managed to eat less cheesecake. And at least I have a lifelong good habit of drinking lots of water. Okay? Oh, and as a result, probably because I ate much less cheesecake than I normally do, I did lose one kilo, which is not bad. Again, the old Donu, well, the old Donu is still very much here, but I, the old Donu is trying to sort of become new and there's a little bit of newness in me, uh, developing in me. And um, the old Donu would have said, well, who cares about one kilo? I could have lost five kilos if I'd stuck to my weight loss plans and my exercise plans and done them perfectly. I could have lost at least three or four or five or six kilos in that time. You know, one kilo is irrelevant. But you know, I'm learning to say, every little bit counts. Every little bit should be celebrated. Every step forward is a good thing. And you deserve, you know, a, a few congratulations for whatever you've achieved. Now, a lot of friends who saw last week's video and heard me say that I, my chosen method for weight loss is fasting. And um, a lot of them have expressed concern because there are two types of fasting. Um, one is intermittent fasting. Well, there are many types of fasting, actually. But broadly speaking, the two that I'm, you know, engaging with are intermittent fasting, whereby you eat for a limited number of hours in the day. Let's say maybe you only eat between 12 and 6 or 7. Um, and then there's extended fasting, which is where you don't eat at all. For It could be anything from one day to five days or 14 days. And in some cases, some people in the Facebook fasting group I belong to have you know, done amazing things like 30 days, 60 days, 100 days. And that is where some of my friends became concerned and contacted me. Because as far as they're concerned, it is very dangerous to commit to extended fasting in any shape or form. As far as they're concerned, okay, maybe you're not going to die if you have the odd day when you don't eat anything, but you really mustn't get into this whole thing about regularly eating nothing every week or for any period of time longer than maybe 24 hours. So, you know, I've had a couple of arguments with friends who want to know why extended fasting, stick to intermittent fasting, just eat between 12 and 6 or 7 and you'll steadily lose weight. And I would like actually to commit to longer periods for the following reasons. Well, first of all, the thing with extended fasting, whereby you, 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 know, you do without food, you just drink water and herbal tea or whatever for several days in a row, is that fasting, when you, when you give your body, your digestion, a break from digesting food, all kinds of miraculous things start happening. A process called autophagy kicks in. That's A-U-T-O-P-H-A-G-Y. I'm spelling it out so that, because uh, it's a kind of strange word most people have never heard, so you can Google it if you want to. And where did I learn all this stuff about? Where, where did I decide that autophagy was a good thing? Where did I learn about it? Where, why do I want it in my life? I think the best thing to say, since I'm not a scientist, I'm not very good at explaining the science behind this thing, this uh, syndrome. Read a book by Dr. Jason Fung, F-U-N-G. I do not know him, I have never met him. He has not asked me to advertise his book. I'm only telling you that reading that book changed my perception around weight gain and weight loss. And I think it's quite a revolutionary book and I know people who have 
who are followers of Dr. Falmos theories, and some of them have actually even been patients of his, have come across them online. <clears throat> and I'm convinced that for certain people, fasting is the best way forward. Now, I'm not saying that other weight loss methods aren't valid. I mean, things like the Mediterranean diet is great. Um, I've looked into a lot of the other weight loss strategies. And I remember I used to, when I was richer, <laughs> go to a spa in Austria called the Mayer Clinic. And the Mayer was fabulous. I mean, I remember I was there one summer for a few weeks and I came out 15 kilos lighter. This is when my weight gain started, you know, in my 50s, as, you know, as, as I quit being that slim, automatically slim young person. I went to this clinic in Austria and I had great results. And the Mayer Clinic, the Mayer Method is worth looking into as well. I mean, apart from the fact that it's a beautiful setting, again, they haven't asked me to advertise them in any way. So I'm just telling you that I really liked my time there and I got very good results. And um, I, I believe that some people are able to follow the Mayer system um, at home. So don't get me wrong. I totally respect some other forms of dieting. But I'm just saying that at this stage in my life, I want to give Dr. Fung's method a try. Because I believe that um, my system is totally inflamed and poisoned and, you know, Having a stomach this big is um, evidence that you're suffering from metabolic syndrome and all kinds of things. In fact, let me read a couple of things um, I picked up about metabolic syndrome. A study published this year in a journal about cancer has found that worsening metabolic syndrome appears to increase the risk of developing the disease. According to the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, metabolic syndrome is a clustering of symptoms that increases a person's risk for coronary heart disease, diabetes and stroke. It may be recognized by the presence of three or more of the following symptoms. Abdominal obesity, i.e. fat belly, high blood pressure, which I also have, high blood sugar, which I also have. I actually, my doctor has told me that I am pre-diabetic. High blood triglycerides, not sure about that, but um, I will ask my doctor because I'm, I'm going to be seeing her regularly during this period of trying to shed weight. And low HDL, which is often referred to as good cholesterol. Right, so breast, endometrial, kidney, colorectal, and liver cancers were especially associated with metabolic syndrome. Now, one of the ways, I mean, I'm sure that all forms of healthy eating, and, you know, all the things you're supposed to do, like exercise, etc., etc., uh, help with metabolic syndrome. But I believe that when you have reached, you've gone so far that your body is sort of like totally poisoned by inflammation, you have practically every condition on the list that is categorized um, un under that metabolic syndrome heading. I think that fasting is the deepest and quickest way of getting your body back on track. So, with help from my fasting coach and tips that I've picked up from Dr. Fung's book, I intend to have as many food-free days as possible until I get to my target weight, which is about 80 kilos or so. Um, right, now one of my favorite things around food, because there are a lot of motivational sayings around fasting and food, and this is one of them. Don't dig your grave with your own knife and fork. 
It's actually dangerous to be obese. It's very bad for your health and can cause any one of a number of conditions that can kill you prematurely. So don't dig your own grave with your knife and fork. Okay? So, what I say to Dr. Funfess is that you're not going to die if you don't eat for a week because there's plenty of food on your body. And food on your body is the fact if you're obese. And, but there are lots of, you know, caveats and uh, little, you know, there are lots of rules around fasting that must be observed. That's why I'm urging anybody who's going to try my method to read the book or watch one of his YouTube videos or some of his YouTube videos, which are all online, um, or even join my Facebook group, which if any of you are interested, I can send out the links. Uh, for now, that's where I want to be. So, haven't done any real fasting these past few days, maybe one day. But you know, I've done it before, not for, I didn't, you know, stick to it. I didn't, it wasn't consistent. And by the way, it's not true that you put all the weight back on if you lose it through fasting. But again, that's something that we can discuss as the weeks go by. But um, I want to try fasting because I think I've so far down the line of unhealthiness, it's the most it's the most effective thing I can do to get quick results. And then there's the autophagy thing I mentioned earlier, as well as the actual weight loss, which we can talk about, as I said, as time goes by, which you can read about as well if you're interested in fasting. So, but please don't worry about me. Do not send me messages saying you will die if you do not eat every day, because that is not going to happen. Okay. In fact, fasting will probably save me from dying prematurely, which will be better results in the seven days ahead. Um, and uh, I'm now going to quickly whiz through a few comments I've received from people who were kind enough to watch the video, the Wellness Wednesday video last week. Uh, Patricia Wask, one of my favorites and regulars, she says she applauds my courage and honesty and is encouraging me and telling me that, you know, my target is not, the mountain I need to climb is not insurmountable and encouraging me to exercise. Then there's someone called Snarky Soprano. I love that. Um, you can do this. She's been tracking her food. I assume it's a woman for the last three months and has lost almost 10 pounds. So she is very happy with that. Then there's Natalie Francis. Um, she says something very wise. She says, remember to add affirmative statements to your daily routine. Reset your mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So. I had to think about that and, and you know I think I understand it and I hope you do too. Um, there's Muse 1950, she's on the journey with me, she's almost the same age as me, um, I think, from what I'm seeing here. She says she's no good at fasting but she'll cheer me on anyway. Um, Lorna Henry says, I have the strength of character to do anything I want. And she pays me a few compliments, which I, I will not repeat because I'm fairly modest. Um, says, go for it. And then there's Living Healthy with Owen. Owen is a great friend of mine. She has, she's also an, um, a social media health influencer. And she used to be, you know, when we were young, she was fat and I was slim. Now it's the other way around. So she's urging me to join her in slimness so that we're both slim at the same time. Um, she says if she could do it, I can do it. Asleep in the garden is another one. Gordy Didi is another one. And Dr. Ubi 
Here's another one, gives me some advice about vitamin D and other deficiencies that contribute to ill health. So keep those responses coming. I won't always be able to mention you individually, um, but I really appreciate the fact that you take the trouble to get in touch with me. And you know, if you think I'm doing anything wrong as well, I am open to constructive criticism. So that's all for this week. Thank you very much. Please tune in to Thank God It's Friday, which is my Friday show, which is about general issues. And um, see you next Wednesday as well. Thank you. Bye.